be bigger ones out the back. So choosing to be a little bit selective and patient waiting for that special bomb to come through. Here we go. Oh my, wow. Skipping down and going down. That would have been, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Jamie. <laughs> Who are you gonna go I'm with? I'm gonna go with Jamie Mitchell. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, well, pink is Makani Adric. I'm pretty sure Makani's a goofy She's goofy foot. foot, correct. Okay, so that takes the pink out of there. And then we have the orange, Grant Twiggy Baker. Ah. Uh, this that, is live that's action. Our, yeah, that's our Billy Kemper right there. He's in black. So Billy's one of the guy, you know, he's he's right up there on the leaderboard. He could be the champ this year. Yeah, I mean, right now the top 10 are so close in scoring that this could go multiple directions either way. And Billy still being out there has a legitimate shot of being our uh, our Eddie Big Wave Invitational Champion, but still quite a bit of surfing to go. Grant Twiggy Baker is the surfer in orange. Uh, that is also a regular foot that we're gonna try to get a positive ID on that previous wipeout. This is Makani. There's Makani in the pink. So this uh, young lady, this woman, mm -hmm. actually, now that she's, I would believe she's 26 years old yeah. now, uh, started surfing Waimea in her teens. Right. I remember her like 16 years yeah. old and paddling out there amongst the guys and earning her way in the lineup. And that's how she earned her invite into the Eddy. Yeah, you know, born and raised right here on the North Shore. Uh, I believe uh, mostly in Pupukea. So basically overlooking the bay as her backyard and uh, taking a shot at riding some big waves as a young talented surfer and has now officially cracked her way into the Eddy Big Wave Invitational, which is uh, says speaks volumes of her commitment and dedication yeah e every one of these surfers right rocky it yeah. takes a uh, uh, hours days mm. you know tears blood sweat just to just to be here and to earn your place in the elite and make your way into the yeti yeah you think of you know pilots or boat captains they gotta log hours yeah, right? yeah you know you go. they gotta log in hours same thing with being a standout anywhere here on the north shore and that is I think that was orange, possibly. <laughs> Grant Twiggy Baker. Whoever that was, <laughs> I do not envy that person. <laughs> oh my Lord. Yeah, Twiggy Baker, final answer, let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was like point break. Derek Dorner wiping out for Bodie in the barrel, Patrick Swayze's double. It was just gnarly. <laughs> Billy Kemper here, successfully negotiating that drop. No problem for Billy Kemper. Yeah, handling quite well. The knee looks pretty solid, at least if you're going to bunny hop at Wayne. I'm, I'm imagining it's pretty okay. <laughs> Here's Makani. Really well done. You know, making it look kind of easy on that drop, but that was no cakewalk right there. And back out into the lineup here with all of our surfers. I see Twiggy kind of describing yeah. how he got slammed in the chest. Probably he was like... He was in the recliner position, sliding down backwards, yeah. looking up at the lip, and it probably just like a ton of water right onto his chest. Wow. And he's up laughing about it. That's so, <laughs> so heroic. Yeah. Uh, Three-time uh, big wave world champ, Grant Twiggy Baker out of South Africa. Uh, but of course, a citizen of the world, always chasing the globe <laughs> yeah. for uh, big waves wherever, wherever it happens. And uh, both last time we ran the Eddie in 2016 mm -hmm. and this Eddie running, Grant Twiggy Baker has taken some classic wipeouts. Absolutely going for it. Crazy Waimea wipeouts and those signature wipeouts falling from the top of the wave to the bottom have just uh, kind of etched him into Eddie history with those two. But he's also had some heroic completed waves and drops and has continued to perform and thus hold on to his uh, very valid invitation into every single eddy that uh, has been come up for possible running each and every year so props to grant twiggy baker yeah. well surfline's been giving us all the information and thank you to surfline for not just being you know, the platform to, mm. to bring it to, to you live, but they also bring us some great 
forecasts and uh, read all the models. So Surfline doing that job for us. This powerful swell came from a hurricane force storm that was centered 1,000 to 1,500 miles from Hawaii late Thursday through Saturday. Winds up to 40 knots extended to an area 900 miles northwest of the islands as well. These strong winds drove peak seas to nearly 50 feet on Friday morning Hawaii time with satellites verifying that a huge swell was on the way. We're going to see pumping surf all day today, although it's going to peak from around late this morning through the afternoon. And windy conditions going to be epic throughout the day as well with offshore easterly trade winds. All right. Well, that's uh, how, you know, we track storms with mm -hmm. Surfline and um, and all the information that they're giving us, as well as a platform to bring you this live broadcast. Thank you for joining us. It is 2.38 local time here in Hawaii. It's been a full day at Waimea for the 10th running of the Eddy. We're in heat number four of the second round of competition here, round robin format, and uh, more sets on the way here, Rock. Yeah, check out the jet skis starting to make their move further out, which is uh, sometimes a reliable indicator of the size of waves that are approaching. And then we keep an eye on our surfers and their positioning. Here we go, up and riding. That That's looks Jamie Mitchell. Like Jamie Mitchell in the red jersey, that light blue colored board. Out of the Gold Coast of Australia, now a North Shore Sunset Beach resident and 10 time paddling champion Molokai to Oahu, Molokai to Oahu, and we're talking prone paddling. It's not stand-up paddling with the paddle, it's not <laughs> canoe with a crew, it is solo prone. That is outstanding. Yeah, he comes from that great uh, clubby culture over mm. in Australia, mm -hmm. surf clubs. Here you go, look at these, on the replay, three surfers, and it looks like, the, let's see, the, the lone survivor, oh, maybe wow. Ian Walsh right there, hanging on through all the turbulence how did he like hold on through that <laughs> blast of not one fire hose like about 10 fire trucks unloading at once and here's jamie mitchell little bird's eye view from the drone looking down at mr jamie mitchell yeah <laughs> but three surfers on that wave only one survived that's right sure-footed ian walsh uh, as you're checking out Surfline too, also there's an article and we want to give remembrance to a great surf photographer, Art Brewer, mm. uh, who passed away in 2022. Um, condolences to the Brewer family and Art Brewer's contributions to surfing as a photographer and documenting mm -hmm. epic events m like the Eddy uh, has, uh, has been woven into the tapestry of surf history. So uh, salute to Art Brewer. Wow, I'm about to warm up with a quilt right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice typo very lovely and uh, you know all of these photographers and the work that they do is part of what puts surfing where it is and tells the story of these moments that pass by so quickly when you're watching them in live action yeah and then being able to capture these moments like art brewer has done for decades uh, has been what makes our sport very special. Again, you are watching the Eddie Big Wave Invitational in memory of Eddie Aikau. First time that we've ran this event since 2016. This is the 10th running of this event in its long history and dropping it to this one. Grant Twiggy Baker, this time goes successful. Beats the lip to the bottom, survives the avalanche of whitewater, Rocky. Yeah, and a stylish kick out right there before that vicious connection on the inside with the other left that comes at you from the Haleiwa side of the bay. So great ride there for Grant Twiggy Baker. And, you know, any wipeout that you can follow up with a ride like that makes it all worth it. Talk about getting back on the horse. He mm -hmm. get back on the horse and said, giddy up, here we go. Yes, sir. Yellow, skipping down the face. <laughs> oh, and sliding. Cole Christensen. Wow. That was not hopscotch, folks. That was Waimea Bay, skip and slide. Yeah, Cole Christensen. Oh. Uh, it's been a fixture. Oh, here we go, another one. Who's got this? 
Billy Jumper and Bourne. Oh my God. And goes down. That was absolutely incredible. The go for it gets the air under his boards. The fence tried to reattach, but no hope for Billy Kemper sending it. I, you know, his feet were just dangling. And I know he's probably in that moment intending to try to land back on his board, but man, what a warrior. That was incredible that was nuts and rocky you can talk to this billy's not a hundred percent he's nope. got an injured knee right now with a knee brace on i mean oh, leave it up to surfers <laughs> to defy math and not be a hundred percent but still be able to give it a hundred percent how does that work <laughs> but billy not a hundred percent with the injury from the backdoor shootout which was a crazy wave if you guys a true celebration those are the words of cole christensen he's out there and he just took a look at that wave yeah, and the motto, there is good to be done. Uh, the Eddie Aikau Foundation motto, and uh, we invite you to check that out and uh, contribute where you feel uh, compelled and necessary as we saw someone take a gnarly wipeout that was the deeper surfer. It looked like it could have been our surfer in white, Tikanui Smith. Ooh. Our Tahitian, uh, by way of Moorea, is out there. And we saw another surfer in front. It was a bit of a brief ride and had a lot of spray coming up from the, the wave in the foreground. So identification uh, will be confirmed shortly as Hawaiian Water Patrol now checking on both those surfers. Yeah, best in the biz. Hawaiian Water Patrol there, out there on the skis, keeping a watchful eye of all of our surfers. Again, for anyone joining us, this is the Eddie Big Wave Invitational in memory of Eddie Aikau. This is round number two, so we had a round this morning of our surfers. There's a second round for our surfers out here. Here's a look at the wipeout. Oh, oh. Tika Nui was in the back, and then it was... Uh, Twiggy again. Yeah, Twiggy on a big bomb again, charging. Oh. Tika Nui goes down early, and then Twiggy right after. Both surfers getting ragdolled. Eyes on the white water, scanning for our surfers uh, to pop up. Yeah, lots of foam right there. We talked about the difficulty in operating these jet skis in those foamy conditions, sucking up a lot of air, a lot of bubbles and foam that does not give you any propulsion. So throttle control, sensitivity, awareness, all of that part of the Hawaiian Water Patrol technique when going into those situations. How's this guy? Talk about a, a warrior. Mm. Another guy with a knee brace, Makua Kai Rothman, calling for the skis. Makua has to have work on, a, you know, on his knee. He's going to yeah. have to get an operation on that knee, uh, which sustained a severe injury last week at the shootout. Right. But look at him. He braced it up, and he's out there. Yeah, I mean... Who figured you might need your knee surfing at Waimea Bay, but he is just strapping it on, getting that knee nice and firm. And we saw him already this morning on some bombs that <laughs> looked like it wasn't really bothering him that much, but I saw him on crutches after it happened. It's a gnarly injury. He was a, week, a week ago, he was on crutches. We, he asked for how do you prepare for Waimea and for the Eddie? You know what Makua said? He said, just press. <laughs> just press. Well said. <laughs> Watch out, that shirt coming out next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's been a great, fun time with all of you watching online. Appreciate all of the great feedback and comments and, and messages. And, um, you know, uh, it's been seven years, so everybody's just been frothing and anxious to get this going. And, you know, there's times when it hasn't happened for a long time and you get into that like cry wolf syndrome of like oh is it going to be on is it off right and, you know what's the swell going to do the winds all of the things that have to line up perfectly and uh here we are seven years after our last eddie in 2016 our 10th since 1984 that gives you a sense of the prestige and how perfect things do have to be and all those spectators on the beach are ecstatic that it's happening today. Yeah. And let's acknowledge our past Eddie winners that we talked okay. about, the 10th the, the running. Mm -hmm. 1984, Denton Miyamura did it for Haleiwa. 
1986, when I brought it over to Waimea, Eddie's younger brother, Clyde Aikau, took the win in 1986. 1990, Keone Downing. Mm -hmm. 1999, Noah Johnson. Ross Clark Jones, the first surfer not from Hawaii to win in 2001. Kelly Slater added that to his list of his many accomplishments, 2002 winner Kelly Slater. We're going to stop with that list right now because someone's going to do it in real time. That was blue. Up and out there. Ian Walsh kind of looking down the face of that one and decides not to go, but we'll go on the winner list. 2004, Bruce Irons took a big win, taking the wave all the way into that disastrous shore break. Greg Long snatching a second title in the dying moments of the event from Kelly Slater in 2009 and our defending champ. John John Florence, 2016 champ. So we had a, you know, couple of years, like, you know, from 99 to had 2002, run. had a good run, but then we had a nine year gap, a seven year gap, and now another seven year gap here is red up and riding. That is Jamie Mitchell. And Jamie getting out in front of that white water, looking for a possible inside connection but decides to just cruise out into the channel out the back on a spitter twiggy so back to back completions between jamie mitchell and grant twiggy baker the veterans out here mm -hmm. uh, getting it done one more and billy kemper again yeah. wow <laughs> what can you say what a great flurry Likely Rocky, I think. Look like Billy. He's going to cut through the soup right here. Bunny hopping. He wants to take it to the beach. Ending with a finale, possibly. Nice bottom turn right there. Maneuvering that 9-6 plus board like uh, he's at Sunset Beach. And then says, mm, no need. I've done enough. Yeah. Well, because the short break this year, you, you talked about the sand. Mm -hmm. Rocky, the Bruce Irons here. You know, 2000, uh, 2004, mm -hmm. when Bruce pulled in on the shore break, right. there was a different sand situation, it seemed like, on the shore break, where the shore break was much hollower. Yeah. Right now, the waves seem like they're rolling through. Yeah, and it's kind of, you know, changes day by day, obviously, yeah. uh, with the, the positioning of the sand, so much water moving, but it seems like for this particular day, it's not forming up that's with that same, you know, ferociousness and veracity as uh, it was during that Bruce Irons uh, victory. Although we could see the sand move around a little bit. We haven't seen a shore break connection in a couple of heats now. But the ones we did see, there were a lot of double ups and triple ups and yeah. not really the gaping barrel uh, that we sometimes mostly see at Waimea shore break. But there's a nice big long drop for our surfer in red. That was uh, Jamie Mitchell nicely negotiated there. And on the outside, Billy Kemper free falls into one that gets quite foamy and as you said Kaipo that soupy section you know almost looks like uh, mom's corn chowder right there <laughs> with a couple <laughs> potatoes to pop over and uh, niblets right inside but Billy kicks out and uh, some live action beautiful unridden wave Wow, and a spray big enough that it's going to make a rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The iconic Peter and Paul Church. That's in so many Waimea photos and videos. It's been a landmark for the ages. Well, a little bit of breathing room right now for our competitors mm. in uh, this Heat number four, round number two, set st starting to stack up again. Round ramen format. We run two rounds of these eight surfer heats. Surfers get to surf four waves in each of the rounds. At the end of the two rounds, we take each surfer's top three rides, add them together, and that's how we get the leaderboard. And that's when you're going to find out who is going to be this year's Eddie's champ. And uh, beyond that list with a very selective group of humans that can uh, claim that title. Well, you know, we have a couple of past champions that are in the event and, you know, quite possibly in the running for an unprecedented second title. We haven't had anyone uh, have two titles so far. No, we've, we've, had have a, not. we've had a different winner every time the Eddies ran. And, and we have not 
had a goofy foot yet. This is true. Okay, well, I guess uh, we're going to step away, but we're just going to step away for a moment. It's going to be a quick commercial break. We're going to thank all the people who support us, and we're going to be back with more from Wyoming after this. and tomorrow it's going to be uh you know a lot of rehabilitation oh especially Speaking for cole christensen cole just sending it big time oh here goes cole oh and likely a trip over the falls too yeah you know uh sliding down the face like that you don't really get into the wave so the wave does pick you up and take you back over and then it is uh, as the legend Michael oh, Cole man. putting him in reverse. Beep, beep. 65 years old, Michael Ho. Uh, so many things can be said about mm. Mike Ho. Oh, we got a set coming through here, but um, he also this was is a shore break hero. Yeah. At one point. Yeah, same year, 2004. Yeah. This is Mike's seventh Eddie. Wow. And that is what a legend looks like, gang. Michael Ho. Uh, looks like he's got a Chuck Andrews board, perhaps. Uh, I believe you're right. You're correct. Good eye. Oh, Out the back. How's this one? That was fierce. <laughs> Billy Kemper. Whoa. Slid into that looking like no problem. He had to tippy toe in the past, but that one, he yeah. had the entry ticket, and he's feeling good like that. We're impressed. I'm impressed on uh, how easy he made it look, and he's already... Uh, celebrating, but he's probably not done. Look him. No, he's going to try to milk this one all the way inside and uh, get his opportunity. There's the left that's coming <laughs> from the Haleiwa side that is going to now make the connection. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Beating his chest one more time oh with a claim. <laughs> Might have set a record for most double fists raised. It's a on a single wave. It, it's a celebration. But it's a celebration. It, it is well <laughs> earned and deserved. Not knocking it in any sense oh, yeah. of the comment. I got, look at but that. <laughs> he <laughs> is feeling it and feeling good, and we're happy for him, too. I got Mike ready to paddle out right there. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Kemper. Billy. Wow. There's Michael. He's also opting for the four fin setup. That is a very beautiful Chuck Andrews Waimea gun right there. I almost think that Mike rides pretty much four fins in everything these mm -hmm. days. He's a big fan. He's a believer. Of, a fan of the four fin. A little more grip, faster without the drag of that trailer fin. But let's look at Billy Camper again. Yeah, Billy with just a beautiful drop. I mean, this wave had a sense of kind of ease at the beginning and a smoothness to it. But when he got to the bottom and the thing stood up, it was anything but those two adjectives. It was gnarly, big, and difficult. And then he comes out to the flats here and wants to <laughs> let everybody know he's feeling good and we're happy for Billy as well. I didn't realize he grabbed his rail to be able to turn the board back to the left uh, to get going down the line in the shore break and gives it one more and then one more <laughs> and lays down and makes it back to the beach safely well done yeah. billy kemper what a warrior uh, impressive performance i won't be surprised if his name is somewhere near the top of our leaderboard could be the top we're going to announce the winner after the conclusion of this event and the final heat and everyone's back in safely that's uh the way that a contest director Clyde Aikawa wants to run it, and mm -hmm. I and I like that because we're gonna keep the mystery for everyone. And yeah. then right at the end of the day, boom, we're gonna unwrap the present and present the 
a prestigious title that you can that you have uh, for all the history in surfing with yeah. Eddie. Will we have our first two-time champion? Will we have a brand new champion? Will we have a our goofy? first Goofy Foot champion? So many what ifs. I love it. I've been riding out the back in red. That's our Twiggy. Oh, excuse me, orange. It's still Twiggy. It is. <laughs> it's Grant Twiggy Baker. Uh, solid there for the South Africa. It looks like the wind's picking up right now this afternoon as well. Mm. Rocky. Not going to make it easier on those drops when that offshore wind, that side offshore starts to kick in. Our trades finally returning. They've been kind of hit or miss for the last few weeks now and uh, starting to really fill in in this afternoon. The heat number five could be in for uh, uh, some trickiness with this incoming wind, as you noted. Skips oh. down the face, wow. reconnects. Jamie Mitchell, air dropping through here. Gets a little bobble in the middle of the wave, no problem. Lots of white water surrounding him, and that white water sweeps him off and his feet. going to say, no problem, and then there's a problem. <laughs> uh, Jamie Mitchell, good job surviving that drop. That was not easy. His board became disconnected from the wave. Yeah, that was the, the key part. Uh, most of the score is going to come from making the drop and, right. and getting to the bottom and getting a turn in. Uh, after that, just riding through, that's just a little, you know, fractional element, just a little sprinkle on there on your score, right, Rocky? But it's really about the size of the wave, the commitment to the drop, and the line you take. Yeah, you know, the little uh, extra frosting cherry on top with some rainbow sprinkles is what is happening when you get past the treacherous point of the drop and that crazy explosion that's almost accompanying every ride that these surfers attempt. And looks like some assistance back to shore by Hawaiian Water Patrol. Deep takeoff for our surfer in blue. That's Ian Walsh. All right, so this may be the last uh, wave of this heat. I think I, I heard a horn, and so that would be Ian Walsh mm -hmm. coming in. Number four on his board. Ian Walsh, a great performer, celebrating his appearance here at the Eddy with his bomb on the beach. They came over from flew over from Maui yesterday, and it's just another story in this great uh, event with so many storylines. Jamie Mitchell running up the shore, returning safely, and a little heat recap, the Tahitian Tika Nui Smith with a beautiful ride to get us started here in the second round of heat four. Oh, and then Twiggy. Oh. Just getting snapped on that one. Looking here at Makani Adric. And Makani, our wahine in this heat, got herself a nice Waimea ride, a little party wave action here, but man, then the party crasher, Waimea Bay, just says, all you guys beat it. And then, except for Ian Walsh says, I got the invite, I got the invite. Here we go, charging into this Cole Christensen. Oh, no, Cole. Oh. Man, the skip and slide just treacherous. What about doubles here? Boom, oh, boom. Double knock. Twiggy and Tikanui. And how's this one, Rocky? Oh, Billy Kemper falling from the sky, from the heavens above, into a watery hell. <laughs> Jamie Mitchell slides in there, stays in control. Score that for the Australian now living at Sunset Beach on the North Shore. And what about this wave? Again, Cole Christensen. Oh, no, Cole. Gosh, the Warrior of the Day award has to go to one of these guys, and Cole Christensen might be that recipient. Just amazing commitment on these monstrous waves. Yeah, there's Twiggy on one. Here's a, another view of a make by Cole Christensen. There he is, still on the board. Oh, it's commercial time. But guess what? We'll be back with more Final Heat of the Day when we return.
Today's television broadcast is powered by Hawaiian Telecom. Experience the speed of Hawaii's only 100% fiber internet with Fi Optics for your home or business. The Eddie Aikau Big Wave Invitational is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Proud to be Hawaii's longest serving airline, offering over 120 flights a day between the islands. The KHON2 News at 7 p.m. on KHI with Bridget Namata and Gina Manjeri. Hawaii's only 7 o'clock news. In a world where people need saving, somebody needs saving. One hero could save you more. Don't worry, citizen. I'm here to stay. How are you saved? The day? Switched into Farmers Hawaii so he could save an average of $453 on his auto insurance. If you need saving, get a quote from Farmers Hawaii. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Call 808 Farmers or visit farmershawaii.com for a quote today. That's 808 Farmers. It's the big, big uh, it's the Eddie Big Wave Invitational in memory of Eddie Aikau. We're looking at the crowd on the beach that has been there since sunrise. Of two days ago. Of two days ago. <laughs> Kaipo Girl, along with Rocky Cannon in the celebration, the 10th running of this Eddie, the tradition that started in 1984. We're in the final heat of the day. We're going to see more big wave surfing, Rocky. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out who our champ is. We got a lot of stuff happening right now. Some of your favorite moments so far of today. Uh, I would have to say uh, Mark Healy's performance on two of those huge waves was outstanding. Uh, I did like the early wave in the morning of Landed McNamara. Yep. That was a bomb. Um, and... Uh, Ezekiel Lau, yeah. some awesome moments as well. Yeah. Highlighting, uh, we saw an outstanding performance by Billy Kemper coming off. An injured, an injured Billy Kemper. Right. John John Florence has been sneaky, quiet, making it look easy, but been, has been gathering big scores, and he's our defending champ. Can John John do it again? We're going to find out after this final heat of the day. And yes. let's uh, talk about this heat right now. First, we've got some sets coming in before we can do a heat introduction, so we'll see if anyone catches a wave and we'll, then we'll get to uh, the surfers eight surfers out in the water and these are uh, walls mountains of water right now oh, so likely Lord. we're gonna have a taker everyone looking at that one and that one just sucks off of the yeah. reef you mentioned the wind earlier and how it's getting a little stronger and we notice the ehukai the ocean spray off the top of the wave reaching a little higher and more pronounced than early this morning so providing yet another obstacle, if you will, for dropping in on these huge waves. Uh, besides the fact that they're about 50 feet tall, uh, wave and current coming up that face makes it extra tricky and difficult. Yeah, here we go. Look at this. We'll see again if we have any takers. There's the pack out there. Eight surfers out in the water. Who wants this one? And again, just trying to defy gravity, but just the mm. physics of paddling into that wave look too difficult. Yeah, not even Albert Einstein could compute that <laughs> one. He's like, what? I don't get what the heck is going on here. This is not right. <laughs> the math just doesn't add up. Inertia, <laughs> volume, <laughs> yeah. speed. Yeah. How does it all add up so oh that I can paddle into this moving wall of ocean oh. and not just catch? Because to catch a wave, you have to, first of all, we talk about physics. Mm -hmm. You have to match the speed of the wave in the Correct. first place to catch the wave. And bigger waves. The bigger the wave move is. Faster. Right. Correct. So the the faster you have to paddle Absolutely. to catch a bigger wave. <laughs> yeah. And, and then there's the inertia that you have to carry to get down the face of the wave. I mean, I got my chalkboard right here. We're figuring <laughs> out <laughs> all kinds of alleg algebra. Yeah, oh, algorithms. Al <laughs> any kind. <laughs> Algebrithms, <laughs> for sure. Getting busted out right here by two connects. That's right. Here we go. Here's a replay. This happened during the break. Oh, my goodness. Just a crazy late drop. That was super well done. That was uh, Luke Shepard's Again. And comes out of the spray and does a somersault <laughs> out in the flats. Shepardson just oh underground gosh. ripper and uh, giving an opportunity to show the world his talent. North yeah. Shore born and bred Luke Shepardson. He's out there right now, Luke Shepardson, in the white jersey. He's joined by former 
Eddie Champ, Ross Clark Jones mm -hmm. is in yellow. Mikey O'Shaughnessy is in purple. Makua Kai Rothman is out there in the blue jersey. Paige Alms, our Wahine competitor out there in pink. Michael Ho, the legend, in orange. Ramon Navarro from Chile is in red. And Tyler Laurent from Maui in the black jersey, Rocky. Yeah, what a lineup uh, we have here. All these heats have been really stacked. I mean, the mixture of North Shore, underground chargers like Cole Christensen, Luke Shepardson, who we have here, and then the you know, championship tour competitors mixed with our uh, outside of Hawaii, our foreign competitors that have really earned the invitation to be here today has been a, a really privilege to watch and, and to be a part of, absolutely, for sure. Look at these lines, the frequency of the swell kicked up. As Surfline predicted, we were yeah. see a pulse this afternoon. The buoys were showing it, and now it's showing at Waimea. Consistent, we've seen the waves got, actually grow in size again to, for the conclusion. I mean, we're gonna have an unprecedented, stay tuned, we'll be back for day number two <laughs> of the Eddie. <laughs> Uh, one day event, guys, uh, and uh, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but it is just an amazing drop right there for Black. Tyler Laron. Wow. Second Still generation going. big wave rider from Maui, and uh, liking the feeling there. Hey. He was claiming it. Celebration. Over the head. Celebration yeah. time for Tyler Laron. That was a healthy, huge vertical drop that he just negotiated from here looked quite easy but folks that was a lot of technical skill to get down that wave and a lot of bravado to even paddle yourself into that wave. Yeah, Tyler Ron 27 years old from Maui uh, first eddy that he's experiencing right now whoa and another drop there Ross Clark Jones <laughs> yeah still doing it Ross Clark Jones our 2001 Eddie Champ, and he's still at it, Rocky. Gosh, what a relic and a legend, <laughs> living legend. Just incredible to see him still out here. And he's out there with Michael Ho. <laughs> and when you start to, uh, you know, think of the amount of years of experience, the combination of those two surfers in particular, it is uh, over a century. Yeah, I mean, it's Ross Clark's eighth Eddie that wow. he's surfing in, you know. He took that win, but he also placed third, you know, uh, and in in uh, in the Eddie in the past. He's got he fifth place. He's been consistent in right. in his finishes here, but of course the big win was in 2001 for RCJ. Yeah. And it looks like possibly a loose board. That uh -oh. might be, I was gonna say, had the old school JBG airbrush that board of the unmistakable Makua Rockman, yeah. so we'll see, uh, see where he is more importantly than the board. We see the board making it all the way to shore, and uh, hopefully Hawaiian Water Patrol is uh, in the company of Makua Rothman out there. So broken leash, it appears, for Makua Rothman. And, wow, the board did not stop. That whole wave, completed ride for the board. Here we go out the back in black, Tyler LaRonde. That is a massive eddy type wave that Tyler just negotiated very nicely. And the water shot looking in, and you see the wave just grow, and it was actually hollow for a moment. Thought he might try to sneak in there, but wisely just stays out in front of it as we watch yellow Ross Clark Jones. Still doing it, your 01 champ of this event, and still putting in the time. Yeah. Love it. Getting back to live action here again. I know you guys are getting the messages again. <laughs> we are going to give you guys the winner and crown the champ at the conclusion of this heat once all our surfers are safe in mm -hmm. from Waimea. So we do have the leaderboard yep. right now. Um, we're keeping that under wraps right now by instruction from mm -hmm. our contest director. Yep. And P PDB, pump the brakes. And 1986 Eddie Champ and the younger brother of Eddie Akau, Clyde Aikau is our contest director. Uncle Clyde saying, hold up. Yeah, wait a minute. 
We're and gonna tell you guys when you guys can announce it, and we're gonna tell the surfers so that we're not blowing a big surprise. And here's Makua coming in from the Broken Leash, and he's unstoppable. Huh? <clears throat> Just a <laughs> fierce determination. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Uh, Makua Kai Rothman, he's an Eddie Charger now. Uh, Makua uh, also will be joining me uh, when we return to the championship tour January 29th for the Billabong Pro Pipeline. He'll be in the booth with me talking about surfing, but right now Ooh. he's doing the surfing, Makua Kai Rothman. Look at that unridden wave and that barrel just open up at Waimea and then shut so abruptly. Loving it, the uh, Eva Bird angles that we're getting mm -hmm. here from the drone just sweeping over the lineup, giving us an idea of the positioning of the surfers. You can see that boil right there. Yep. That the notorious boil, infamous. And M Michael Ho right there in right the middle it. of the, hey, he's right on the boil. Mm -hmm. huh? That's the fetch veteran right there, 65 years young. Oh, here's our award. And with that iconic shot of Eddie Aikau. Yep, that very internationally known famous red board. He was captured riding for so many years out here at Waimea. We saw a rider right there was Ramon Novaro in the red jersey, our Chilean charger. Yeah, Ramon Navarro, I think you remember, I think in 20, um, 2000, 2009, Ramon rode that crazy wave and nearly closed out the bay. Mm. Here's a replay of Navarro. Yeah, and at one point in time, you know, he could have been possibly our first Goofy Foot yeah. champion. He was right there kind of scratching at the tips of the leaderboard, clawing his way to the, the top portion of yeah. that year and uh, just that was couldn't quite pull it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 2009 he got fifth, but I mean, he was right there. He yeah. was at the top of the leaderboard at one point. Makuakai Rothman and Hawaiian Water Patrol battling their way back out into the lineup. How hard is that? Yeah, that is just uh, tough sledding, like we said earlier, and trying to read the ocean that is got so many different chops and waves and you know side wash back wash huge white wash so a lot of different angles and a lot of different looks that you have to be aware of when you're on board that jet ski because uh, that's a lot of washing but it's not clean inside there no at you all. know it's not clean yeah maybe the dirtiest wash you'll ever get <laughs> but you know and then you factor in the you know the spectator influence and uh, awareness that you have that you're on stage, right. basically. There's nowhere to hide. And you're not hiding, especially if you fall off the ski and you're underwater, you're still not hiding. Everybody knows what happened. And to try to operate safely to prevent that, for one, it's, you know, a, a, a loose jet ski a lot of times is, is a hazard in itself. So just staying on board is very difficult staying on board from <laughs> a drop like that also very difficult i believe that was ramon once again in the red yeah the goofy foot and then out in front was uh possibly page alms yeah so page alms on the shoulder there and ramon navarro taking a straight crazy drop on the backhand but getting engulfed by the white water here in the final heat of the day this is the final heat of round number two replay here yeah, Ramon just in that super deep position. You see all the water kind of coming up the side of his rail, indicating how steep that drop was and how close he was to not making the drop. And then once he got to the bottom, it, there was nowhere to run. That wave was right on top of him. More lines here, Rocky, formulating, starting to hit the reef at Waimea. Anticipation by our competitors and positioning. You can see on the inside there, in the yellow jersey, Ross Clark Jones, the deepest. Michael Ho in the orange jersey, right on the boil, getting ready to go. First wave of the set, looks like a steep, it looks like a bigger second wave. Yeah, you know, these first waves, they're either the forerunners or they're the ones with that really gnarly, hairy drop that we've been seeing. And 
Looks like we've got Michael Ho paddling for this one. He's up and riding through the mist and the fog. He holds on. It was uh, yellow out in front. Looked like Ross Clark Jones possibly. Oh, but Michael, down, but oh, 65 years young. Oh, look at this set. Wow, that's white. Luke Shepherdson again scoring so we might see Luke's name oh. sliding up that leaderboard as he has turned in a couple of good rides in this last heat <laughs> pretty incredible surfing holy moly talk <laughs> about hurting a flock of sheep the Shepherdson oh, the sh phenomenon <laughs> is real oh man that's right, Luke Shepherdson, a North Shore surfer, spent years here just doing it for the love. 27 years old in 2015, Luke Shepherdson caught one of the biggest waves um, of the year, of maybe of all time, here at Waimea. So he's the quiet stories that we yeah. get to learn about here at the Eddy. Yeah, you might not have uh, heard too much about him in other surf events, although he has done well in events around the North Shore, but Luke putting his name on the map now, and uh, Michael Ho, in the back right there once again another super steep drop and then it's like once you get to the bottom you're just a sitting duck basically of like okay now what do i do and uh, basic grit and bear and try to hold on shepherdson from this angle shows the true size oh. of the wave and then that high line to complete it i thought it was gonna like you know try to re-entry or something <laughs> it's crazy like that but i think he was you know wanting to get back out to have time for one more but he's the kind of guy that we could see on his last ride yeah. you know try to go for that epic shore break grand finale yeah as we see our water patrol zooming through the water again the format we had 45 minute heats eight surfers in each heat in the first round five heats there this is the second round this is the last heat of the second round eight surfers again out in the water this is heat five these are 50 minute heats and after this heat, we're going to look at all the numbers, we're going to look at the leaderboard, and we're going to know who's the champ. And with what it takes to run this event uh, from the ground up, you know, getting everybody to the beach bright and early, uh, or st actually still dark and early, uh, and days before uh, the anticipation, all the surfers that have to come here. Anytime this event runs, it's a historic day. Yeah, true. So we are experiencing history, folks, and we are glad to bring it to you and glad that you're joining us as well yeah and good to be catch up with you as well rocky you know back yeah, on the sure. mic talking about surfing where we all started I mean, yeah and um it's been a, a, a great day and thank you to all the help that we've got from uh, hawaiian telecom yeah from salt and air studios absolutely from surfline salute to khon and the whole team over there uh, that have uh, brought all this to us and um you know, lastly, and we, hey, you know what, with that, we might as well go to commercial and thank a couple more people, too. We'll be right back with the final heat of the day and more talk from Waimea. From a distance, you don't really notice, but once you really start sorting the sand, you realize, wow, there is actually a lot of plastic in here. There's definitely a need for us to clean the beaches. Sometimes you need a huge army of people to make an impact. Although we might not see the direct benefit of it, hopefully future generations will, and we have to start somewhere. Do you, do you want to go? We'll be friends discovering the road. Will you guide me together we'll grow? All the places, all the places we can go. From innovative digital tools like Hawaii's first video banking chat to business checking and financing, no bank does more to help small businesses than Central Pacific Bank.
easy. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, Ma Lama Waimea, is, uh, it has been um, just, not just a, a, a Wahipana, sacred ahapua'a, mm -hmm. but also the venue, the home, the playing field of yeah. the Eddy, which has always delivered so much action and inspiring moments of these brave surfers, both men and women this year. Yeah, and it's great to uh, mention and incorporate our Wahine surfers that have absolutely earned their spots in this event, you know, and they've been charging this wave right. uh, for a long time now. By getting and they've, the had, and they've had some of their own events and things to recognize them but to be part of this really is where they deserve to be i'm pretty sure kiana kiala kenley's been a, a an invitee in the past mm -hmm. but it's great to see now coming to fruition in 2023 where every single heat had at least one female surfer right. and i'm going to say pay joms makani adrick kiala kenley justine dupont emily erickson and andrea muller you're inspiring women great job today incredibly incredible surfing and immense bravery from these women well and that is also what contributes to our historic day here is having these brave wahine compete uh in today's event so all the all the uh, compliments to you and uh awesome performances and we're gonna look forward to more from all of you that's right as uh this event continues uh but you know as you said earlier you know We've had invitees in this event. We've had Keala as our first female invitee, but we haven't had the Eddy. True. So being an invitee is one set or one uh, step in the right direction for accomplishment for these big wave surfers, but then the anticipation and the you know patience to wait for their opportunity in the way of the swell. And to get happened. it and to show up mm -hmm. and charge and um, it's real. It's real. <laughs> and this is looking real right here, Rock. Yeah. Who you got Goofy Foot skittering down. Wow. Making it to the bottom, and that would be Ramon Navarro, our Chilean competitor. Big Mountain of Whitewash hits his heels, no problem for Ramon. Let's see if Navarro wants to take it to the shore break. Look like he's uh, pretty anxious to do so. Yeah, looking into that afternoon sunlight bit silhouetted now we switch angles and able to see his very bright red jersey the goofy foot stance unmistakably Ramon Navarro and trying to work his way to the shore break we'll see if it happens he's got the connection and <laughs> like we talked about earlier the shore break not as cooperative uh, with the big barrels, oh, but, but just as entertaining. Yeah, you slide your, you catch a wave at Y Man, <laughs> then you slide your fins on the sand to finish. <laughs> Pretty That's well done. That's a good feeling right there. <laughs> Look at Ramon. Yeah. And he's energized. He wants to run back up into the corner, what, paddle back out again. Also opting for the four fin setup is uh, Ramon Navarro. Some of the beach crowd and uh, Hawaiian Water Patrol. Yeah, there's Ramon. There's Uncle Uncle Melvin Pu'u. There are. Oh, there's yeah. one of the Hamas yeah, right there. Hammer time. So Ramon, look, he's in good shape. 43 years young and still enjoying it. Oh yeah. As a beachgoer with, oh, her, a with her with her phone down there, you better look up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing way beyond the yellow tape. <laughs> Stay behind the yellow tape. How many times you gotta tell you guys? Don't don't text and watch <laughs> the Eddie standing by the shoreline. Hey man, <laughs> don't even another public don't even service announcement. Don't even text and cross the road, you guys. Yeah, what I are know. you doing? Here Seriously. we go. Ramon teetering and making it on through the drop, Rocky. Yeah, I like uh, his negotiation right there, taking it straight down to increase the the dramatic effect of being engulfed in that white water, not taking the easy road to the right side, but going straight down, surviving the hammer, surviving the chop, and re-emerging, riding all the way through the bumpy soup right here, and a couple of chops. Could have taken him down, but he's got a solid stance, a little carve to the, the backhand right there, and then switches direction back to the left, looking for the barrel, but instead, elects to ride straight out, and 
even survives that second explosion, <laughs> like right there. That was impressive. That was solid. So are the solid lines coming through oh, here. Time for goodness. everyone to scratch it to position. It spins around there. Yellow uh, goes for it, but has to spin around. That was Ross Clark Jones put himself in a deep position right now. We'll see what happens to Ross Clark. Yeah, the next wave even bigger. RCJ, the deepest, the furthest oh, in. This man. wave is feathering Rocky. It is huge. Oh, Ross is not going to make this one. No, I don't think so. Oh. Oh, that's the worst. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's breaking really far out. And Ross is right away. Nowhere to be seen. He's somewhere in that area of <laughs> in that whitewash that you couldn't see him with the wave in the foreground but where he was paddling i don't think he was going to make it over chose to paddle Ooh. for the first wave of that set mm. couldn't get into it then yep. every surfer's nightmare <laughs> yeah spin around and and you know what though Ross every surfer's nightmare scaled up yeah. uh, quite a few notches yeah <laughs> but he's Man. back on his board already rocky i just saw him that's what champs are made out of. Already yeah. back on his board, paddling back out. Ross Clark Jones, our 2001 Eddie Champ out there. Okay. What a hero. Flying by, you can see the boils in the lineup and the positioning of our competitors outside of those boils right now, Rocky. Yeah, there's that one really pronounced boil you can see going up a lot of the big waves and that's sometimes the, you know, the, the indicator positioning point that the surfers are striving to be behind look, the boil look at the animal ross clark jones <laughs> where he's sitting so far inside of right. everyone now you know and he just he's got almost pummeled like daring why <laughs> as well he's like i'm still gonna sit here i'm still gonna do it <laughs> ramon on. navarro asking about time how much more time left in this heat the final heat of the day sets again looming on the horizon and emptying on to the deep reef here at Waimea. Yeah, such a crazy pronounced shelf where the waves break and they have to come from water that's so deep. And that's why the wave just jacks up and gets so steep. I mean, it, it does something that I think is, you know, very unique, uh, especially among waves here on the North Shore. Uh, to where it's just so much water and uh, hits that reef so But it's nicely. still a pretty deep wave, right? So, Rocky, like, what's it, right. what's it feel? What's it? T how deep is it? Like, if you hit the bottom at Waimea, how deep on the water are you? I mean, you're going at least 15 to 20 feet down, and that's, that's very deep. I mean, you start to feel the pressure in your ears when you're that far down, and I've never hit the reef here at Waimea, uh, but I know surfers who have. Who have, yeah. And... Uh, it's it's always like a wait come again you know yeah. did you say you just hit the reef oh my gosh but if you did hit the reef you also know it's a long way up to mm -hmm. find the surface and air again if you feel like you're bouncing on the bottom at Waimea or touch the bottom yeah yeah you, you know you're in trouble uh, very very scary position to be in and um, some more waves approaching it's definitely not slowing down as we hit this uh, afternoon Awina La type of day, uh, time of day and lots more surfing heading our way yeah. and we could see someone from this heat jump up to the top. Sure, on the leaderboard and, and take the title of uh, Eddie Champion. You know, normally this time of day we call it Pauhana where you're done with work but today it's not Pauhana because I don't think anybody went to work other than our <laughs> incredible crew and our surfers. Crew and our water patrol <laughs> personnel, everybody involved with the event. But everybody else, enjoy the day off. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but what, you know, I mean, it basically is a unofficial, like, Ho Oahu Hawaiian holiday. Look, these guys didn't even need camping permits on, <laughs> yeah. on the cliff to come. And like we said, Eddie goes, anything goes. <laughs> Be patient on the exit from Waimea Bay, however. Yeah. And Ma Lama and Kokua, all those mm -hmm. around you, because uh, no rush. Only get work tomorrow, so. Yeah. Just <laughs> cruise them. Cruise them. Pick up your trash, your Opala. First. Please do that. Yeah. And uh, take care of our, our beach and our bay. We thank you for that very much.
please uh, check out our good friends at Malama Pupukea Waimea, taking care of our conservation zone that extends uh, into Waimea Bay and around Three Tables and Sharks Cove. Mahalo to all of the crew that is there on a daily basis caring for the ocean and our land. Uh, 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 of Waimea and Waimea Valley. Look at this. Uh, you can see this drone shot flying over the competitors. And we talk about the depth here at the reef at Waimea Bay, but these waves are so powerful. You can see the sand that's caught in between the coral getting spit up in plumes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of how much water's moving and sweeping through the bay. And like, like we said, it's deep water. So the energy of these waves actually reaching the bottom yeah. shows you just the broad uh, span of energy that has, uh, you know, been able to affect the bottom of the ocean and bring up those sand plumes. Right, you got like, hey, hey like octopus and, and lobsters just <laughs> squeezing, like squeezing. Yeah, they're on. just hanging on through the walls, trying to hang in there on the white reef. knuckling. What's happening today? What's happening today is the Eddie. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to go to a commercial to thank some of our sponsors. We'll be back with more from the final heat of the day here at Waimea. This valley is very special. It was a sanctuary, a place where people would come for safety. And just how special Waimea Valley is, you bring out the specialness of our entire island and our archipelago too. It's such a serene place and it's just captured my heart and I just love being here at Waimea Valley. How's it everybody? Hawaiian Telecom is excited to support the Eddy broadcast statewide for the very first time. To get from the surf to the studio to your house is done through a Hawaiian Telecom fiber optic internet connection. Please enjoy the event and remember as Kamaka said, gotta wear that mineral sunscreen. Today's television broadcast is powered by Hawaiian Telecom. Experience the speed of Hawaii's only 100% fiber internet with Phi Optics for your home or business. Why should someone choose Levi Imani and Soldner for their serious injury claim? We've been helping Hawaii's injured for many years. We have the lawyers and the financial resources to make sure insurance companies pay fair compensation. Our work requires compassion, but also know-how. We have that experience. We're passionate about our work. It's a great privilege to help families through what can be the hardest of times. Levitt, Yamane, and Soldner. Flying over Waimea Bay, a legendary surf spot, a legendary uh, piece of Oahu, the Ahapua'a of Waimea, the site of the Eddie Big Wave Invitational in memory of Eddie Aikawam Kaipo, along with Rocky Cannon and Monstrous Waves again, greeting the bay. Yeah, we're in our last heat of the day, wrapping up an amazing day of Waimea surfing. Oh my gosh, getting blown out the back. I'm not, it looked maybe like it was white Luke Shepherdson. He's been the guy in the spot in this last heat, getting a couple nice rides. He had a few from earlier as well in his round one heat. So he's been, kind of dialing himself in to the the most gnarly positions and you know had a few where he had to kind of bail out the top like that but just being in the spot was uh part of the battle for Luke. we were talking earlier about Palhana time which yeah. is uh, after work time which we are in but we were working Luke Shepherdson is working today as well he's a city and county lifeguard wow he went to his captain today his captain uh, allowed him to take a couple of one hour breaks so he can surf his heat. <laughs> Talk about an inspirational story. No time off for Luke Shepherdson. It's either you're saving people or you're charging my mail. Yeah, and you know, 
so much mahalo to Luke and the job he does daily as a city and county lifeguard. Something you can and appreciate. And so yeah. special for him to be able to have a couple hours of break time. And, you know, by the way, there's nothing else happening on the North Shore. Uh, if you're swimming at Pipeline, I, you know, I mean, best, of, best of luck to you, but, but it's all here. It's happening here. But this is true. Our city and county lifeguards, however, are busy today as they are at every time we got big surf over right. here. They're the heroes on the shoreline. Luke Shepardson's been one of the most impressive surfers at this eddy in my book, Rocky. I yeah, mean, he has just the waves, the lines, the commitment right. off yeah. the charts. Yeah, his positioning, he's got it dialed in. He seems pretty, <laughs> pretty one with the ocean. Uh, but you can't count out guys like Zeke Cloud. John John, John was John, uh, on yeah. the leaderboard there at the top uh, after a couple of waves. Big wave Eddie contest this year at Waimea Bay. Lots of moments to reflect on uh, throughout the day today as we see Paige Alms, one of six women that have surfed in this 2023 edition of the Eddie and put on a great inspiring performance she's making her way back up the sand and we're making our way over mm -hmm. our site in anticipation of our celebration and presentation of our eddie award there's the legend right there michael Hull. oh man such a legend you know not only in what he does in the water but even out of the water he's such a uh you know guy who's gracious with his time who's been around this for so many years knows the ins and outs of every little thing of professional surfing and still is at it around it doesn't get tired of it doesn't get tired of the you know the uh the attention and, and support and, and all of the things that come along with that he embraces it so well and just to put things into perspective when we talk about michael ho mm -hmm. michael ho was a part of the first group <laughs> of professional surfers that started professional surfing way back in 1976 wow and he's still here relevant in 2023 do that map as we look at the recap oh, man what a story from michael ho as we watch i believe that is peter mel from earlier today and a guy still doing it yeah here's today's recap and that we got thrown into right now so mm. we'll do our best to go through here uh, unscripted with Rocky and Kaifo show. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> hey guys, like, go. Yeah. Recap. Here we, we go. go. Here we go. This is it. Look at that. The Bay calls the day, and somebody had to pay whoever was in the back. <laughs> oh, that was uh, out in front with that sur surviving and through that. That was Ian Walsh. Ian Walsh. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. Makokai Rothman. Steep, deep, and underneath. Nice big late drop for Makua, surviving with that treacherous knee injury, still performing well. Ramon Navarro. Uh, Nick Von Rupp. Excuse me, Nick Von Rupp. We're going to play guest the surfer right now. All right. That the, sounds good. Rocky and Kaipo. Kai okay. Lady put in a great performance out here. He did. He was uh, one of the guys that stood out in the first round, and uh, somebody just hit the eject button on that huge monster of a wave. Oh, no, KK oh going down and hanging on and finishing up there. That is um, Jake Maki, young North Shore teenager with his first Eddie. There's Hawaiian our Water Patrol. Our level of safety. Yep. Level of safety was very high as uh, these surfers were taken to these waves knowing they had the expert and precise supervision of Hawaiian Water Patrol. Look at this monster wave. Just so much energy in this relatively small era area of Waimea Bay. And doing that math there with that amount of water coming into a small bay as Waimea is just makes for water moving every direction. Billy Kemper, heroic performance today. Charging with a broken knee, got the knee brace on. That's not stopping Billy Kemper. Look at this drop, Rocky. Making it to the bottom. And look like possibly Jamie Mitchell, maybe. And Luke Shepardson on a screamer. That wave is so large. 
It makes him look so small. Shepardson again. Oh, Check this one out. Oh, man. So 27-year-old City and County lifeguard, North Shore native Luke Shepardson came to play today at oh, the yeah. Bay. Yeah, how do you say it? Double dip? Working for the city and county, taking a couple breaks and getting some waves during the eddy. I think uh, give him all he deserves. So you land in McNamara from earlier today. And Landon put on a great performance. That he did. Mark Healy as well. Another view of Jake Mocking. Sorry, that's Jake right there. Oh, man. What an attempt. Trying to reconnect the board to the face of the wave. Hardly ever works out for the good <laughs> in Waimea Bay when you become disengaged. Tyle Shipman and Ezekiel Lau behind him. Some of today's highlights that you're viewing right now from a great day at the Bay. I think that's Mark Healy. Man, Mark Healy, again, look at him. Just uh, such a solid stance, able to pull mm. through that. Disappearing numerous times in the whitewater, Mark Healy shaking it off. Man, Tyle Shipman was trying to get into this one. Little airdrop and did the uh the quick splits right there look at this bomb mark healy from the outside thought he was gonna get into that one but the wind and the current up that huge face said sorry not this time but the next time mark does make it and gets an epic ride exploded by the white water And the second round of Tyle Shipman, he was able to negotiate past a very large explosion of white water. Well done by Tyle Shipman there. Cole Rothman with his own big late Waimea drop on the backhand. Mark Healy once again fluttering down the face, able to complete that drop. And he holds on in front of the white water, one of the standout waves of the day for me was this one here of Mark Healy. Yeah, Mark Healy, again, Eddie Veteran and showing why he is over the falls for Ezekiel Lau, but the Warrior came back after that wipeout and caught a few more waves. Keala Kenley mm -hmm. charging. And basically, it looked like her body went every which way but off the board. Good, solid stance and performance there. For Keala, and then beautiful negotiated drop there for, I believe that was Lucas Chianca. Shumbo. And goes for the uh, kick out. Backflip. <laughs> what about this? Sharing's caring sometimes at Waimea. Tika Nui Smith <laughs> in the black jersey, the Tahitian. Oh, excuse me. It might be Peter Mel and Shane Dorian, actually. Yeah. Two longtime friends enjoying a special moment at the Bay. And they came with cost as well, taking a look at some of today's wipeouts. Again, thank you to our City and County Lifeguards and Hawaiian Water Patrol. Oh, my. Oh, the carnage was real. Makani Adric charging on the backhand with her first appearance at the eddy check this one out rocky oh billy, billy camper billy i i think that might have been the wipeout of the day as far as treachery and danger well maybe that one <laughs> cole christensen <laughs> wow getting sent after sending oh, it gosh sent to the bottom and a big beautiful drop there from tyler laronde yeah, that was his best wave of today, and you can tell the excitement as he mm -hmm. exits. Waves going to connect into each other. RCJ. Ross Clark Jones still doing it at the bay whenever the bay calls. Yep, the ledge goes over the ledge. <laughs> Michael Ho <laughs> showing why he's a legend. The 65-year-old legend wow. <laughs> with a big takeoff but luke shepherdson get to know this name because mm -hmm. today luke uh put together some 
excellent rides, Rocky. Uh, a biblical performance, a performance of biblical proportions. Luke doing quite well today, and uh, so excited to see who's, who's going to walk win? away with the 2023 Eddie Big Wave Invitational Championship Trophy. Ross Clark Jones trying to please the crowd and make it to the inside section. But you know what, bro? We love you and well done, my friend. People on the beach walking back towards uh, the awards presentation area. Hawaiian Water Patrol tents you see there in the foreground. And uh, we'll take you down there pretty soon, I think. That, you know what? I'm going to try actually see if automation works right now. Let's throw okay. it to the awards show right now. See if this works. Go ahead. Chris. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out and supporting. Um, it was an amazing day out there. I'm so stoked to be surfing with all my friends and watch everyone sending it. Oh, yeah. Just so blessed to be here. Thank you to the Icon family for organizing this and everyone involved. And thank you for everyone coming. It was, it was a um, memorable day for sure. Yeah, it's, it's probably the best big day of my man I've ever seen in my life. Josh, it's Larry, and thanks for the time I went through everything. Take up my best um, Memorable day. Um, hey. Celebrating the day of Cal and his legacy. It's very fortunate to be here. Just looking left to right, it's surreal to me and being able to be in this line with. Oh, 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 Guys that are my heroes and friends. Best day of my life for sure. So, I've been part of this since elementary school. Now we're here. Dreams. Dreams are good. Yeah, Lando. Felt incredible to surf in this event. I know we've all had the Eddie I Cal poster in our rooms growing up, so to have the opportunity to actually go out there for Eddie I Cal and his Ohana, the, uh, the I Cows, it's a uh, dream come true for me. Um, it's, this day feels surreal. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. So yeah, one of the top days of my surfing career and my life. Thank you everyone for coming out. Uh, I just personally want to thank yeah. the five and the and the entire iCal There's family. There's no way I can get out. Sorry, bro. In my eyes, today was the best day of surfing history. You know, there's nothing more prestigious <laughs> than this right here. And these guys are gladiators that are standing next to me. And it's uh, unbelievable. We're all in safe. And uh, we're going home to our families and celebrating uh, with love and respect. Nothing but love you guys. <laughs> Um, just like a dream come true that you're leaving that day and you tell me I'm a speed upper. and the Icaw family and my um, brother, Eddie the Icaw. I want to thank everybody for, for being here today. Um, I want to, I want to praise every single contestant who paddled out because just paddling out today was a feat in itself and congratulations to all the contestants. Okay. We want to also, on the front, we also want to say, they are not the American, they are the director, all of the forecasters from Surf Line and, and Pat Caldwell, the forecasters and forecasters all over the world. We thank them, we thank all the judges, we thank Faith, we thank Linda Ibsen for her undue work to make this happen today. Now listen, we 
I believe we have a fantastic scoring system today, and the judges held their line to the very end. So, here we go. In eighth place, and a thousand dollars, Kaylee Mama. A true Hawaiian, Kaylee. In seventh place, carry on the carrying on the legacy of his family and a full-on charger for sure. Backside rider, Landon Maximilian. One thousand dollars. One thousand dollars. This next gentleman has earned the best best wave of the event. Full on charger. Best wave of the day. Uh, we're awarding you on Hawaiian Airlines. We're, we're awarding you 250,000 Hawaiian miles for the best wave of the day and earning sixth place $1,000. Ezekiel Lock. One of the full on chargers from Maui continuing to push the limits of riding waves, either big or small, or in the air, or in the sky, or wherever he goes. $1,000 to Kyleni. Fifth place. Love this guy so much. He's so beautiful to my family. In fourth place and making three thousand dollars. Billy Okay, third place. Third place. Still charging like a bat out of this world. Guys, take it easy. I'm shooting for Surfline. Don't get in front of me. Making $5,000. Mark Healy. Yo, bro. We're going to have to come down. And we have a third place. 50,000 Hawaiian miles from Hawaiian Airlines. 150,000 miles. Thank you, Hawaiian Airlines. And that was third place, Martin Okay, just for fun, okay? <laughs> Let's just say, I'm not saying it yet, bro. Let's just say, John John won the contest. Let's just say, who would agree on that? We have Luke Shepard. Well, you 
said it yourself. Second place. And the winner of 2016, John John Florence. Well, there you go, Rocky. That was the awards presentation, and what a moment it was. A Cinderella story, if you would. Mm -hmm. Luke Shepardson, the North Shore native, city and county lifeguard, takes out and goes down in history books as an Eddie champ. Wow. On duty, performing at Waimea, in uniform, gets the winning scores and the championship trophy that's right and talking about those scores rocky now we're able to digest those scores yeah a perfect score on your three waves would be a 90 point ride luke shepherdson a 30 point ride a 30 point ride and a 29.1 89.1 out of a possible 90 point perfect day luke shepherdson it's luke's day all hail King Luke, <laughs> the king of the bay, the Eddie champ, Luke Shepardson. Well done, my friend. I mean, it's been an awesome ride to watch him as a junior lifeguard, as a menehune, now a real lifeguard, and an Eddie champ. The Amazing North, ride. The, the North Shore's first lifeguard, Eddie Aikau, and the 2023 champion at the Eddie continues that tradition of life saving. This is a chicken skin moment right now. It's a tearjerker, man. I'm telling you. Congratulations, Luke Shepherdson. You did it, and uh, we applaud you. That was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, what a day he had. Ap like charging out of his mind, but in the zone. Knows this wave really well, and was obviously up against some extremely formidable competition. I mean, back to. Uh, Defending champ right on his heels, John John Florence. And for Luke to pull it out, what a victory, what a day. And uh, we hope that you guys are excited and as inspired as we are. <laughs> we are inspired. What a great day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all of our partners. Thank you to KHON, Surfline, Hawaii Telecom, Sultan Air. Uh, thank you, Rocky. And with that, we bid you aloha. The Eddie. Just two words that mean so much. A symbol of some of the best of Hawaiian culture. A steward that protected all life and respected nature. Eddie Aikau, Hawaiian hero and pioneer of big wave surfing. Edward Ryan Makuahanai Aikau was born on Maui and according to family lore, began surfing at the age of 11. The Aikau Ohana soon moved to Honolulu where Eddie grew up to become not only the first lifeguard at Waimea Bay, but the first city and county of Honolulu lifeguard for the entire North Shore of Oahu. As a lifeguard, Eddie would charge out into waves of 30 feet or more. When no one else would go out, Eddie would go. And along the way, Eddie would become a world-class athlete, surfer, waterman, winning the premier world surfing contest of the day, the 1977 Duke Kahanamoku Invitational Surfing Championship. And at the time, as only the second native Hawaiian to win the surfing championship, along with his brother Clyde, Eddie became a symbol of the rebirth of Hawaiian cultural discovery in the ocean. And in 1978, he became a part of another symbol of Hawaiian pride and culture, and he joined the Polynesian Voyaging Society as a crew member of the Hokulea. When we stop and think 
about Eddie's final journey, his quest to save his crew, his ohana as he was paddling out into a raging ocean, looking for help for his fellow Hokulea crew members. You have to ask yourself, could you go? This is why.